This is not out of order. The Cisco course format jumps from 10 to 15, but we will cover chapters 11 through 14 later. In Cisco Lab 15, System and User Security, we have our introduction and it's telling us that we can learn the difference between the super user account and regular user accounts and also view user account information by doing this lab. In 15.2, it tells us that we will learn two ways to run commands as an administrative user, and this is often necessary for making changes that affect the whole system. To access the root user account, we need to use the su or sudo commands. The su command is usually used to switch users and start a new shell as a new user, with the default being the root user. This su command is often used when a series of commands need to be executed as the root user. So su completely switches your shell into a different user. The sudo command on the other hand is typically used to execute single commands as the root user by prefixing that command with sudo. So sudo is just used for single commands and you don't need to switch into a whole nother shell. The sudo command must be configured by the root user before an ordinary user can use it. By default, the sudo command stays in effect for 15 minutes on systems where the root account is not enabled by default. Root access has been enabled on the virtual machine that we have to the right right here, allowing the su command to be used. When executing without the arguments, the su command opens a new shell as the root user. So if we don't specify which user we want to open in, it'll automatically go to the root user. Most systems will display the current user at the command prompt, but it can also be helpful to confirm what user is logged in with the ID command as shown below. This step will ensure changes required for specific users, such as service accounts, are executed properly. I'm going to clear our current command line, and now if we do su dash, this is to go to the root. So it's going to ask for the password, which is netlab123 for the root user inside of this command line. By default, the system does not show the password when you type it out. So when you type it out, it's just going to be um, hidden like this. And if we do ID, we can see that we are in the root user. In step 15.2.2, we are told that after using the shell started by the su command to perform necessary administrative tasks, we can return to our original shell and original user account by using the exit command. So once we've done all that we need to do inside of our root user, once we're done with all this, we should exit this. So we're just going to type exit and this logs us out as shown here. And if we press ID, it shows that we are logged out. We are in the system admin. We are not in root. If we did sue again, though, it would ask us for the password, which was netlab123. Pressing enter, we can see that we are in the root at localhost. This time, I didn't do a slash here. Just to show that you don't need arguments, it'll automatically go into the root user. And if we do ID, we can see that we are back in here. If I wanted to exit again, I would just press exit and it would log us out or it would exit us. And if I did ID, we can see that we're in the system admin again. In 15.2.3, we're told about the sudo command. So not the su command, but the sudo. Again, the su switches which command shell you're in. The sudo command is just to, for like a single command, run it as the root user. It works on systems that do not allow root access by default and it is preferred for most administrative tasks since root access times out automatically without having to exit. First, we need to type a command as a system admin, non-privileged user. This is for our example here. So I'll clear this. And if we are non-root, we don't have permission. And if we want to do head slash etc slash shadow, we want to look at this. We cannot open this because we don't have the correct permission for it. Only the root user can view this. Pressing next here, if we want to look at this, but we don't want to log in, if we don't want to use the su, we can just use the sudo for a quick system administrator run. If we do sudo head slash etc slash shadow, so we're going to get the first 10 lines, that's what head does, that was from the previous lab, of this directory, and press enter. It'll ask the 
password for the system administrator, which we know as netlab123. Again, it doesn't show it up because that's how Linux works with passwords. And if we press enter, we can see that we get the first 10 lines in our slash etc slash shadow. Slash etc slash shadow only works if you are a root user. In 15.3, we are learning about user accounts. And in this task, we will learn about user accounts and the files and commands that display user account information. In 15.3.1, we are told that the user and system accounts are defined in the slash etc slash password and etc slash shadow files. To view the first 10 lines, we need to use the head command. And while the password file contains general information about a user such as username, UID, which is user ID, GID, which is group ID, home directory, and login shell, the modern shadow file has additional details, including encrypted password and password policy. So the slash etc password file is basically a general overview of the user, while the slash etc slash shadow goes more in depth with their passwords and such. So if we do head slash etc slash password, we only get this information right here. However, if we were a root user, like we did previously right here, and we, we ran the slash shadow directory, we got all of this right here. And for both of these, we should notice that the, they have semicolons. It says right here that the file contains a colon, delimited database of all user and system accounts available on the system, and that the system admin account is a typical user account. The reason why we have these directories and why they can only be access, accessed by the root user and why only certain commands should be run by the root user is to mitigate damage that regular users can cause to the system and it goes in depth about that right here. In 15.3.2 we have a callback to the previous lab where we use the grep command to search for something. So if we have the grep command we can actually search in our password directory right here. So if we use grep and then what we want to search for, and this example is using system admin. So if we did grep sys admin and then do our directory, which is slash etc slash password and press enter, we can see that we have the system admin highlighted because it looked through the slash etc slash password directory to get this. The reason why this exact line doesn't appear inside of here is because we use the head command to get only the first 10 from our slash etc slash password. 15.4 is about passwords. The slash etc slash shadow file contains information about users passwords and in this exercise we will use several commands to view the data inside of this file. In 15.4.1 we need to try to view the first few lines of slash etc slash shadow file a file that contains the user's encrypted passwords and information about aging them. So this is only accessible by the root user, not the system admin. We can access the slash etc slash password area, but that does not have as much sensitive information as the slash etc slash shadow does, which is why we're allowed to access it. If we were to do head dash three, which gets the first three lines, and we did slash etc slash shadow, Let's just do, let's try password first. So if we do password, we can see that we get the first three things. However, if we try this, but we get rid of password and use shadow, since it's more sensitive, we are going to get a permission denied, not allowing us to access them. In 15.4.2, we are told that we can see who has access to this file if we do ls-l, and I think this is when in a couple labs back where it showed us how to see the access for these files. If we do ls-l and then the directory, which is slash etc slash shadow and press enter, we get this line right here. And it tells us who has access and it's just the root user. So now we need, we know we need to log into the root user to be able to view this file. So to do this, since it's only one command, we are not gonna change shells. We are just going to use the sudo command. So we'll do sudo head dash three and then r slash etc slash shadow directory. It's asking us for our password as a system admin, and our system admin password is netlab123. If we press enter here, 
we can see all of this more sensitive information that it was not showing us before. In 15.4.4, we are told about another way to retrieve the account information for a user by running the following get tent command. The syntax for this is get tent password, which is our directory, and then the username we want to access. The get tent has the advantage over the grep command because it can access local and also users who may be defined on network directories servers such as LDAP, NIS, Windows Domain, or Active Directory Domain servers. So we're going to demonstrate the get tent command by using GE tent, our directory which is password, and then our sysadmin because we currently want to look at our sysadmin and if we press enter we're going to give us this information separated by semicolons. If we scroll down here we can see that the colons are delimited and they have a purpose. So the first thing we have right here, which is our sysadmin, is our name. The X right here is our, plas our password placeholder. Since we do not have a password, we are just going to have an X. Next, we have our user ID. We also have our primary group ID. Then we have an, a comment right here. This is the comment. Our comment is that we are the system administrator. We have our home directory, which is slash home slash system admin, and then our shell. And our current shell is slash bin slash bash. In 14.4.5, we have a callback to another lab when we use the man for manual to view the documentation of something. If we do man5 password, we can view documentation of the fields in the slash etc slash password file with this command. If we run it, we are going to see all the documentation here. We can press enter to move forward line by line we can press space to go to the next page and then eventually when we're at the end as it says we are right here we can press q to quit in 15.4.6 we have a callback to i think the last lab which was lab 10 and we learn how to view account information for our account or a specific account if we have arguments using the id command so if we did ID here, we would be, since we're in the system admin, getting the information for the system admin account. If we did ID and we had root as our argument, pressing enter, we would get information for our root command. And we have what the output would be here. So the first thing that we have, which is this, or this, is our user identity. The next thing that we have, which would be this, or this, is denoted by GID, would be group identity. And then we have the groups that we belong to. We can see that we have multiple groups inside of here for our system admin and only one for our root. And we have a little bit more information to note down here just about the slash etc slash group and that how that's linked with slash etc slash password to determine our group memberships. 15.5 talks about who is on the system. So we're gonna see how we can execute commands and look to see who's logged into our system. In 15.5.1, we are told to use the who command to get the current list of users on the system. This makes sense. Who is basically just checking who is on the system. So first I'll clear the console that we have. That way we have a brand new command line and just type in who. And then we're gonna see that the only one on the console is me because I am the system admin currently for this exercise, the date, time, and month. First thing that we have is our username, which is sysadmin. Then we have the terminal, which is this. I forgot what PTS means, but it does mean something specific. Otherwise, it would say console. And then we have the date at which we are logged in. There could be a fourth column, and if there is a fourth column, it can be the name of an IP address or a local or remote host. So sometimes there would be a fourth column after this. In 15.5.2, we use the W command to get more detailed view of the users who are currently on the system. So the who command shows us who is on the system, and then the w just basically gets more in depth with it. So if we type w, we can see all of this stuff right here. Output from the w command displays a summary of how long the system has been running, how many users are logged in, and the system load averages for the past one, five, and also 15 minutes. Also displayed is an entry for each user with their login name, TTY name, which is the terminal name, the host, login time, idle time, JCPU, which is the CPU time used in background jobs right here, 
and the PCPU, which is the CPU time used by the current processes and what is executing on the current command line, which would be this currently. And this is the correct output that we would get for the W command, which is again just a more detailed information about the who command. In 15.6, we are viewing login history. The last command is used to read the entire login history from the slash bar slash log slash WTMP file and displays all logins and reboot records by default. To use the last command, all we have to do is type in last. If we press enter, we are going to see who is on the system and who has logged out of the system. So it, tell, it tells us for me that I am still logged in when I logged in. And that is it for lab 15 system and user security. Super simple, just going over how to look over simple security measures with root and different users. Again, this is not out of order. The Cisco course format jumps from 10 to 15, but we will cover chapters 11 through 14 later.